Okay, uh, the next style, the second last we're going into is the client server style. And as with the layered architecture, this is an extremely common style in the internet, so you should all have seen this before or at least heard the terms. Um, and what you do in the client server style is you have some kind of network, for example, the internet. Uh, you have a number of clients that would like to access a service of some sorts, uh, and they're all connected to the same network. And then you have a number of servers that provide you this kind of functionality. No, not service, but server. So the server serves something to the client. Um, and this is, of course, relevant when you have, for example, a central functionality that everyone would like to access. So, for example, here is some kind of database. Uh, in the course book, there is, for example, here a, a database of images and a database of videos and then another server that, that sort of catalogs, uh, categorizes, uh, categorizes everything. Uh, and all the clients might access pictures or videos or just want to find certain things in there. And this, the servers are sort of a central entity uh, that represents them. That. Also, because of the network, we basically have a distributed access, so the clients, as long as they're connected to the network, they can access any of uh, these functionalities. Um, also, very useful, uh, we have the possibility to vary the load. So, for example, if we uh, assume that all these servers are actually providing the same kind of data, we could divide the load by three. So if they all store the same pictures and we have too many clients, well then server two just takes over a part of the load from server one uh, and that basically distributes the load overall. So that's, for example, one of the reasons why the internet scales so well because you can simply add servers that provide the same functionality. Um, there are, of course, a number of difficult things here, and one of them is this black box here in the middle. We have something that says network, uh, and it's in practice really hard to predict how the performance will be here. So uh, this is essentially very hard to predict how the overall load will look like, how the overall performance of the system is, uh, and also if you have servers that you that have different capabilities and you would like to use them for the same kind of system, uh, it can get quite complicated how the different access works and how that uh, affects the performance. So prediction of performance is hard. Uh, the other thing is, imagine server one, for example, is the only one that provides videos. Uh, you again have a single point of failure. So if this one fails, it's gone. It doesn't work anymore. Uh, so that's an issue. And finally, uh, there is a big question mark and how do you actually manage all of this? So how many servers should you have? How do you access all of them? So how do the clients know? Uh, how, do the, how does the system know essentially which server to connect to? How do you deal with servers crashing and, and others coming in newly? So it's not that easy uh, to actually manage this in practice. But again, an extremely successful style and uh, well, the, the internet shows that it's a good practice to use this uh, for the reasons mentioned it works uh, very well.